Now, I'm going to get into some heavy spoiler territory, so I would highly recommend clicking off this video if you haven't seen either movies yet. I do not own the rights to any Sony Spider-Man film. All rights reserved for Sony Pictures Animation are protected under federal law. The new Spider-Man film is just phenomenal. I know this has been being down, but it's the truth. The first Spider-Verse movie was perfect as a standalone film, but this movie went above and beyond it. The first Spider-Verse movie focused on Miles taking up the mantle of Spider-Man, and that he did. However, the new film sort of plays off Miles' seemingly complete character with a new arc. In the first film, he was just this average kid with great expectations being thrust onto him without asking and wanting nothing to do with any of it. That is until his nearest Spider-Man had died and was given the responsibility of destroying the Super Collier before Kingpin destroyed his universe with it. Then, he meets Peter B. Parker, the miserable Spider-Man that we all know and some more care about. This version of Peter has all the traits that make Spider-Man relatable, rogue, depressed, and divorced. Thus, Miles' Spider-Man mentorship begins, and they meet other Spider-Man from different universes. Spider-Gwen, Spider-Man Noir, Penny Parker, and everyone's favorite, Spider-Ham. Miles would suffer his lowest point after his uncle Aaron dies, and Spider-Man had given up on him. After a little heart-to-heart -heart with his dad, he would use his newly found powers on command and come to one of the greatest scenes in animated film history. The film ends with Miles finally becoming the next Spider-Man, before going back to their home dimensions, they all lived happily ever after. Then this film came along and went even harder. The comedy still slaps, the characters get more development than the first film, and the plot is just a lot. They even have spectacular Spider-Man for crying out. The one thing that stands out most in this film is the character. Every character feels well-written and unique from one another. Batik is one of the funniest characters in the movie by far. Especially the JTC. One of the most unique characters in this film had to be Spider-Man. He's your stereotypical rebellious character, but with a sense of nuance to him. Like, he doesn't go by any of the Spider Society rules, and he just does his own thing. He just emits an aura of coolness that you just can't but love. Then, there's the two antagonists, The Spot and Miguel O'Hara. The spot, in my opinion, is the one that sticks out the most because of how villainous he's written to be. At the start, he's just your average villain of the week. He's goofy, talks a lot, and clumsy in terms of committing crimes at fine miles. However, towards the middle of the film, he becomes much more powerful and an actual threat towards not only Miles, but to the multiverse as a whole. All because Miles threw a bagel at him and called him villain of the week. Man, if I didn't love bagels. Then there's Miguel O'Hara, or Spider-Man 299. He's basically the leader of the Spider Society and handles any anomalies, which basically means anything that winds up in another dimension other than their own. He's also the sort of perfectionist as he tries to maintain the canon, which is a line of events that in the Spider-Man comics are considered to be integral to his character, like the death of Uncle Ben and Captain Stacy. Of course, Miles tries to break away from the canon since his dad is becoming police captain and spots new target. He'll end up rebelling against the Spire Society and trying to get back to his universe. This rebellion is tied to the overarching theme of the movie, which is about breaking away from, the, from a predestined fate and becoming your own person. He wants to create his own story, even when the people around him don't allow him to. This denial of choice is best exemplified when Miguel's calls Miles the ultimate anomaly because he was bitten by a spider that wasn't from his dimension. It will also foreshadow the ending of the film when Miles, when Miles finally manages to escape Spire Society. He escaped from Miguel's clutches, sure, but ends up in Earth-42 because the spider that bit him came from that dimension. Because Kingpin removed that spider, there is no Spider-Man and crimes taking over New York. Also, Earth-42 Miles is a new problem in that dimension, while his uncle Aaron is alive. It would be his father that died instead. Now, Miles is stuck in the wrong dimension, beaten, and possibly about to be tortured. Spot has become an all-powerful threat who plans on destroying his life, and Miguel is on his trail. The movie does end with a glimmer of hope, that one or small group of Spider-Men will save Miles and help him defeat Spot. I will say a couple things about the movie, starting with 616 Peter, specifically how he doesn't really do much in the film, besides shoving Mayday in everyone's faces. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. After all, this Peter's a lot happier, and every gained his confidence through his character development in the last film. Still, I wish he could have done more in the film, 
but I will save my criticism of him until the next one. Then there's a the point how bloated it feels. It felt like they were trying to cram in as many plot points as they could into one movie, which is probably why they cut into two parts. Then there's Miguel and how he called Miles the ultimate unknown. I haven't read any of Spider-Man 2099's comics, but I do know he wasn't bitten by a spider. He was part of a failed lab experiment in Alchemix. This can make him seem rather hypocritical, understandable, in the sense that he doesn't want other universes collapsing for one single mistake. I do hope that the next movie will acknowledge this and resolve it. That this can make him seem rather hypocritical, but also understandable in the sense that he doesn't want other universes collapsing from a single mistake. I do hope that the next movie will acknowledge this and resolve it. Overall, I would give this movie a 9 out of 10. I can't wait for the next one. Thanks for watching.